diagnosed a long, long time ago, you may think your eyes will be bulging forever. Like a never-ending curse that can't be broken. But even if you've been told it's too late, treating your thyroid eye disease may still be possible. And a new day is within sight. Learn how you could give your eyes a fresh start at stilltreatted.com. This is Kelly Clarkson hanging out in Vegas on ET. Monday on ET, we are exclusively backstage at the iHeart Radio Music Festival in Las Vegas. Kelly Clarkson, Kane Brown, your guy Lenny Kravitz. Why didn't I go to that? <laughs> Stop. Jeez. All right. Plus, we are at home with our good friend Wayne Brady. Can we talk about your show? Oh, we can do Secret that. Secret celebrity <laughs> renovation. You have a good one coming up. Yes, we do. With arguably, and in my opinion, the best wide receiver oh, in the NFL. Boy. Devontae Adams, argument. yes indeed. He's but tough. as good as he is at football, he's got a heart as big as the stadium. We renovate his grandmother Betty's home. Oh wow. Yeah, good night everybody. See y'all. And Devontae has already made quick work of the kitchen. There we go. I'm giving Devontae a work pass for the day and asked him to happening now. I can to cross the border and now here at the Migrant Resource Center in San Antonio waiting for the next step of their journey. And there's a neighborhood just down the street that say that this influx has affected them. Coming up, you'll hear from some of them. Still feeling plenty like summer for the first official day of fall on Saturday, but a few storm chances return to the forecast next week. We'll get to those details in a few. It's week five and we have plenty of big games tonight, including our game of the week, Smithson Valley at New Braunfels Canyon. The news at five starts now. Dozens and dozens of migrants in the streets of San Antonio, some of them even sleeping outside the Migrant Resource Center on San Pedro, trying to figure out what their next steps will be. And just behind that center is a neighborhood. As our Daniela Ibarro explains, some have mixed feelings about their temporary neighbors. Hey, pull out. Donations of water, juice, and clothing helping migrants survive. <laughs> it's been a long journey for them to get to San Antonio. Before crossing illegally into the U.S., Jose Carmona traveled through the jungle and by train. He says it's not easy to survive in Venezuela. It's why he and other migrants traveled thousands of miles to get here. He's hoping to get to Kansas for work, but has spent the past few days outside the Migrant Resource Center on San Pedro. Just around the corner is a quiet neighborhood. One neighbor says she wishes the migrants well, but says some have made her feel unsafe. It's starting to scare me because they're starting to walk down the streets and try to sell you things and ask you for things. Sandra Maker says this wave of migrants haven't caused her any issues. I think they deserve a break. They've been through a lot. As for Carmona, he says his sacrifice is for his parents and two kids. He thanks God for getting him to the U.S., hoping he'll soon receive asylum. Catholic Charities, who's running the Migrant Resource Center, says they don't need any support from the community right now. They say they will need volunteers soon, but they're asking anyone who's calling them to instead go to their website and donate to support humanitarian relief. Reporting in San Antonio, Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio police investigating a shootout at an apartment complex. The victim reportedly shot during some type of exchange. Police say his girlfriend pulled a gun and then shot at the suspects. All of this unfolding in the 4300 block of Spectrum One. That's off I-10 near Wurzbach on the north side last night. Officers say the victim was with several other individuals in the complex when someone started shooting in the parking lot, the victim hit in the stomach and in the back. According to police, his girlfriend was watching from a second story balcony and tried shooting below, aiming at the suspects who jumped into a vehicle and sped away. The victim taken to the hospital and at last check was in stable condition. Those suspects are still on the run. For the second time this week, weapons found on a local campus forcing a school district to notify parents of the potential danger. This time it was Seguin High School, a student there who brought uh, two BB guns to campus. In a letter sent to parents, the principal of the Seguin High School wrote that Others on campus saw the guns and then reported it to a school staffer. The letter goes on to say no one was injured. That student now facing disciplinary action for violating the district's code of conduct. But then just this last Wednesday, a fifth grader at Kindle Elementary School was shot by a BB gun while at recess. The alleged shooter 
an 11 year old who was shooting a BB gun on property next to the school. That 11 year old was not a student and was not actually on the campus. Happening tomorrow, neighbors in San Antonio ISD getting their first meetings on the school's closure plan for 19 schools. Earlier this week, SAISD unveiling what they call the right sizing plan that would address the declining enrollment at schools there. Right sizing is a term that's used to describe how organizations and companies restructure or reduce the use of resources to maximize their efficiency. Tomorrow's meeting is at 10 o'clock at Lowell Middle School on Thompson Place. More detailed information on the closure plan will be available and residents will be able to voice their opinion. There are several more meetings in the coming weeks. More now on the hidden dangers of what are called water beads. These tiny beads expand into squishy balls when wet. They're popular with kids and well known in emergency rooms as well. We've learned the beads have been linked to thousands of ER visits, including one from a local family. Toy on your side's Marilyn Moritz says last week's recall of one toy at Target, only the beginning. But they just like me. Kipley is why her mom is on a mission, one that started six years ago. Perfect. Kipley woke up and she just started projectile vomiting. Ashley Hogan says at the emergency room, surgery uncovered water bead material in her baby's intestine. She'd gotten hold of her older sister's water beads. We had no idea that this could be what was making Kipley so sick. Water beads are marketed as safe sensory toys for kids over three. Just soak the tiny beads in water and they grow and grow. Now we've learned water bead accidents have been linked to at least 7,800 ER visits since 2016. Doctors say the beads contribute to hearing loss, infections, bowel obstructions, blocked airways, even death. I've talked to so many parents who bought them for their older children, but then somehow their younger children got them and either ate them or even breathed them in. And then once they're inside their bodies, those water beads can continue to expand in their intestines or even in their lungs. Here's what's so tricky. When water beads are dry, they scatter, they bounce like crazy, and they can easily get lost in rugs and under furniture. Water bead toys are widely available for sale. One reason Hogan has testified before the Consumer Product Safety Commission. I want them to ban water beads as toys. The commission tells us it is now reevaluating toy standards. We found with water beads is that, you know, there's a part of the standard that, that they may quote pass unquote, but doesn't address the hazard that we're seeing. For now, Hogan tells parents of small children, just keep water beads out of the home. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Happening tomorrow, the 10th annual Head for the Cure 5K and Walk. Online registration is closed, but you can register right before the race, beginning at 8 o'clock at Providence Catholic School, which is located cat corner from KSAT. We're inviting you to join us as we help to raise money for brain cancer research. It's a cause that is very personal for us. Our late news director, Jim Boyle, passed away after battling brain cancer. If you can't be a part of the 5K or the walk, you can still be a part of the effort to beat brain cancer by just donating. Head over to KSAT.com. Artificial intelligence is all over our lives, whether we realize it or not. It's true, whether it's Netflix recommending a movie, Amazon recommending some stuff to buy, or even autocorrect on your phone, you're probably using it every day. But what about artificial intelligence in medicine? Max Massey shows us how a first of its kind program partners students at UT Health San Antonio with UTSA in hopes of leading the way in the future of medicine. It will undoubtedly save lives in the future and uh, it will also help prevent diseases. It will allow us to have more efficient treatment and evaluations of patients. Meet Dr. Ron Rodriguez, professor of medical education and urology at the University of Texas Health Science Center, San Antonio. We're using methods of machine learning to help us understand relationships that might not be apparent to the human eye. Dr. Rodriguez and his team, they've been at the forefront of machine learning artificial intelligence in the medical field. An extraordinarily powerful means of being able to understand the real world in health and medicine, and I think it's going to revolutionize how we approach When you think of advances in science and medicine, you might think of medical mannequins, you might think of blood pressure readers. 
you might think of the pacemaker or defibrillator, but right now, as we're at this forefront of technology, well, it's a whole new world. Well, it has been the focus for us to try to find a way to educate our medical students, educate our residents, uh, and prepare them for the future so that they're not just being told how to do things, but they're leading the way. This new program to teach medical students how to use AI, it's a novel idea, and it has already begun. Our program began with two pilot students who completed the UTSA program last year and are now back in their medical school year four. And then we have a current student who is at UTSA at the moment on leave from the School of Medicine and will come back next year. And the artificial intelligence that they're learning, it is specifically aimed at the applied healthcare and health sciences space. I think it's also much more important that the healthcare providers be the ones that lead these efforts in AI as opposed to uh, the technology experts who don't have any real background in medicine and health. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Check out traffic right now. This is 410 and McCullough, and you can see what looks like a stalled pickup truck right there on the, right by the median, actually in the middle of the concrete barricades there. You can see it's causing a slowdown as traffic makes its way around. This is an up close view, I'm sure. This backup stretches for miles. All right, today marking the last official day of the summer season, and it is definitely feeling like summer across South Central Texas. Here's a look at some of our weather watcher reports out west 101 in Del Rio, 97 in Eagle Pass, 96 in Leon Springs, and then closer to the San Antonio area, 99 in New Braunfels, 101 in Lavernia, 95 over in Bernie. A lot going on this evening, including area football games. Here's your Friday night football forecast. Mostly clear skies are expected. Could get a little breezy at times with some wind gusts occasionally upwards of about 20 miles per hour, 95 degrees by kickoff. And then we'll start to see those temperatures fall into the 80s later on tonight. Now heading into the upcoming weekend, still unseasonably hot, but we do have some storm chances that return early next week. We'll get to that timeline in just a few. Thank you, Mia. Still ahead, commercial ads are coming to Amazon Prime movies and live stream series. How you can soon expect to see them, but what it'll cost you if you don't want to. But first, parents, the antibiotic typically prescribed to kids is still in short supply. What you need to be aware of as we head into the winter months when it comes to amoxicillin. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what's coming your way today on the news at 6 o'clock. Another dog attack means another dog seized by San Antonio's Animal Care Services, but that doesn't necessarily mean the dog will be put down. We show you what can happen to a dog that bites someone. Plus, she lost her hands and her feet after having a baby. It's been nearly a year since this Pleasanton mother's life was forever changed when she went into septic shock. We'll show you how she's doing now. All that and more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. In today's health news, parents, the liquid forms of amoxicillin still in short supply, meaning pharmacies may run out quickly as we head into the winter respiratory illness season. According to the FDA, liquid forms of amoxicillin typically used to treat children for strep, chest and sinus infections and earaches are in short supply and because of that customers can only order a limited amount of the powder used to make liquid amoxicillin. Some analysts say the shortage is due to amoxicillin's low price point. It's not as profitable for manufacturers to make so they focus on other drugs. Amoxicillin is the most prescribed antibiotic in the country. The drug company Norvo Nordisk says it has found several strains of bacteria in batches in the main ingredient in the diabetes medicine, ribelsis. The patches are, were produced at the company's North Carolina plant. According to the Wall Street Journal, the FDA inspected that plant last July, and that's when it found that the company did not thoroughly investigate the cause of the bacteria. The FDA says it is not aware of any ongoing quality control issues at the plant that makes the drug. Norvo Nordis, however, says it did conduct investigations on the bacteria and that the plant is still producing the drug. If you're a streaming Amazon Prime customer, get ready to shell out more bucks to skip those ads. Prime will soon include limited advertisements in movies and shows. 
The ads will start next year. Amazon's change brings it in line with its rivals like Netflix and Max, adding ad supported tiers as companies search for additional revenue. Amazon says the commercials will help it quote, continue investing in compelling content and keep increasing that investment over a long period of time, end quote. Customers could skip ads by buying an ad free tier for an extra $2.99 a month next year. Prime Video included in the $139 yearly Prime subscription. I feel as though on this last day of the calendar summer, there should be like confetti <laughs> uh, guns and balloons falling from the ceiling. Yeah, well, it'd probably start on fire. It's so hot out there. I know. Honestly, probably <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, we are very much excited to kind of end this summer season just because it has been so incredibly hot, significantly hot with all of those records that we have broken. But yes, at 1.50 a.m. tomorrow, Fall officially arrives, at least astronomical fall, and this is why. So tomorrow marking the fall equinox, the Earth's axis is neither tilted towards nor away from the sun when the fall equinox happens. Nearly equal amounts of daylight and darkness at all latitudes are found. And of course, as we continue on throughout the fall season, the amount of daylight that we see will start to decrease all the way up until the winter winter solstice, which happens in late December, the first official weekend of fall here in South Central Texas, not feeling like it at all. Temperatures consistently above average, starting off in the upper 70s and highs climbing into the upper 90s, even closing in on the triple digit mark for us here in San Antonio, especially on Sunday. The heat index even higher tomorrow because we have the moisture in place. But as we head into late Sunday and especially on Monday, we will start to see a few changes work back in. A boundary moves into central Texas that combined with some upper level energy could spark up some scattered thunderstorms, especially on Monday. More on that in just a second. If you're fixing to step out the door, though, for any Friday evening plans, here's a look at our actual air temperatures in white and then the feels like temperatures in yellow, just because we do have the moisture in place. For a lot of us, it is feeling like the low trip digits, so definitely stay hydrated if you are planning on heading out over the next few hours. The humidity is going to build even more so as we head into the overnight hours, very similar to what we saw last night. So because of that, pretty copy and paste tomorrow morning, some cloud cover works back in. It is going to be a humid start with a forecast low around 78 degrees at 7 a.m. here in town, and then we'll start to see some more sunshine take back over into the afternoon, 90 degrees at lunch time and then a forecast high pointed around 98 for us here in San Antonio. Yes, some low triple digits will be possible. 101 in Pleasanton, that forecast high temperature, 101 in Carrizo Springs, 102 in Catula and 100 over in Eagle Pass. Most of us stay dry tomorrow. We've got that 20% potential for a few isolated storms, especially across portions of the hill country at the southern Edwards Plateau Sunday evening and Sunday night. And then we bump up that potential to a 40 percent chance into the second half of our Monday. So let's talk about that setup right now. Most of us are quiet, but we do have a few isolated showers across our far southeastern counties. One that's weakening near Hallettsville, a few more popping up over there in DeWitt County near Cuero. But for the rest of us, we're just dry out there. We've got high pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere currently in control, and that's still going to be the case into our Saturday and into the first half of our Sunday. But then that starts to move farther off to the south West, and that allows just enough room for this weak frontal boundary to work into central Texas. Now on Sunday, the better energy for storms is just north of our area. But again, we'll keep a 20% potential for a few isolated storms across our northern counties to pop up Sunday evening and Sunday night. We catch a break into the first half of our Monday and then better energy works in Monday night. Right now we've got about a 40% potential for some scattered rain and thunderstorms, likely not going to be for everybody, but at least it's something and then notice on the back side of that temperatures a little bit cooler in the low to mid 90s and some more comfortable mornings in the low 70s. So we just got to get through this weekend and then better temperatures into next week, guys. Count in the minutes. Yes. Thank you, Mia. All right. Going to be a warm Friday night. S Valley, NB Canyon. 
get it on. Let's get it on. It's yeah. our big game tonight, and we have, what, 16, 17 games that we're scheduled to get. This one should be a good one. The Rangers at the Cougars, and Smithson Valley has dominated this one in recent memory. Plus, in the NFL, Mike McCarthy said, when it comes to Trayvon Diggs, it's like a punch in the gut. Coming up. Big game and our big game coverage tonight will feature the New Braunfels Canyon Cougars hosting the Smithson Valley Rangers in a District 12 5A1 showdown. The Cougs are 2-2 two two overall and own one in district after losing 34-31 to Bernie Champion. Now the Rangers, who are ranked number 6 in 12's top 12, are 3-1 on the season and 1-0 and in district. The Cougs' last win in this series was back in 1995, and they'd like to change that tonight thanks to home field advantage at Cougar Stadium. Oh, that's special because our community really rallies behind us. Student section gets loud, gets rowdy, really gets us going. Yes, sir. Gets us going, gets us in it. Crowd motivates us, you know, do it for the community too. Um, it's really important because our schedule, um, we've played a lot of tough teams and Canyon's another one. And uh, it'll just build more confidence for the rest of the district if we can get this win. There's not really, I would say, a game that's any bigger than any other game. But, I mean, it's always... You always want to go out there and do your best for, I mean, whether it's Canyon, Wagner, Bernie Central, whoever we got. I think no matter what, every game is going to be a big game for us. Smithson Valley, New Braunfels Canyon is our game of the week and it's one of 16 games that we have scheduled to get tonight. Highlights on the night beat. Also on the night beat, the week five road trip with stops in Stockdale, Lavernia and Marion. Mary Rominger will have more with Stockdale coming up tonight at six. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys cornerback Trayvon Diggs suffered a torn ACL yesterday at practice during a red zone one-on-one -on -one drill. Head coach Mike McCarthy told the media today it's a very safe drill and just one of those things that can happen. And now Diggs, well, he's done for the season. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, makes you sick when you see one of your, one of your guys go through this. And obviously, you feel sick about, you know, him. And, and it's definitely a punch in the gut. You know, for our football team, um, but this is but this is an opportunity um, for for our defensive depth to, to stand up and and continue to move forward. Next man up, indeed. So Diggs tweeted, "Thank you for all the prayers, and I appreciate everyone for checking on me. This is just God's plan. I will be back and better." It's going to be interesting to see how that affects that defense is playing so well, though. It isn't just mentally. How are they going to handle that going into Arizona, knowing that he's not back there? Yeah, he may not show up in Arizona, but <laughs> right. got more to do with the Cardinals than the Cowboys, I yes. think. We'll be right back. I want to update that traffic situation at 410 and McCullough. You can see a stalled vehicle off to the left there. Emergency response teams are there telling traffic to go around it, but it's causing quite a backup, as you can see from 281 at 410, a backup in multiple directions, not only on 410 itself, but again, this is the ramp from 281 to 410. It is a mess out there, not what you want to run into on your Friday afternoon. Uh, this a little bit better, not a whole lot. This is I-35 southbound. This is the upper levels are moving kind of slow, but you can see the lower levels. Uh, that outbound traffic out of downtown is crawling. But uh, it is a Friday afternoon. We hope you have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless. Exactly. And if you are fixing to step out, here's one more look at your Friday evening forecast. It'll still be hot over the next several hours. Temperatures falling through the 90s, eventually into the 80s. And muggy, very hot this weekend. And then we'll monitor that chance for rain on Monday. Thank you, Mia. And thank you for watching the News at 5. World News Up next. See you back here at 6.